So let me thank everyone for coming, and thanks to Eric, Dr. Poisson, for arranging this. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about a new center that we have created at UTEP in the Computer Science Department in collaboration with Geological Sciences, Mathematical Sciences, and Environmental Sciences, and it's funded through the National Science Foundation. Before I start, I'm going to give you a little bit of background so you understand uh, something about cyber infrastructure. That's the main topic about the center. And so let's look a little bit about what is cyber infrastructure. When we talk about cyber infrastructure, we're talking about a foundation that is formed that allows scientists to be able to do their science using basically the Internet all the resources that are available to them um, that allow them to do their science and work through the internet. So this includes hardware for computing, it includes data and networks, it includes digitally enabled sensors, a lot of the sciences are putting sensors out in the field and collecting data and they want to share that data with other scientists via the grid or via the internet observatories and experimental facilities, and interoperable software, middleware, and tools. So these are all the types of things that make up cyber infrastructure. So you could be looking at it from the hardware side, or you can be looking at it from the software side. And in reality, it takes both of those in order to build cyber infrastructure. There are many challenges because this is something that NSF has put in as one of their priorities uh, with respect to the national infrastructure. But the biggest problem is one of education. How do you train people now to use these types of technologies? There are norms and cultures that have already been built around doing science. So science has always been somewhat of a solitary endeavor where you're in the lab, working with people, working with the resources that you have right there. And with cyber infrastructure, what they want to see happen is that you have resources that are shared across uh, uh, time and locations and, and time and place, right? But you have to now get the scientists to accept this. And, and that's a hard thing to do. I do my work this way, now you're asking me to, to do my work a different way. So there's all of these social organizations that have to be developed. And, and as I said, the main thing is education. So this comes from the famous Atkins report on cyber infrastructure that was published in 2003. And what the whole vision is of cyber infrastructure is that we want to create these communities of scientists uh, and educators that we call virtual communities. So we, we have heard the word virtual community, we hear the word e-science, the grid, all of these grid communities, all of this is what is, is referring to the same thing that we're talking about. Uh, GEOM, the Geoscience Network that UTIP has been involved in with for many years is such a virtual community. There's, some, there's one called CEON, there's one called NEON, uh, there's a BURN, uh, uh, cyber infrastructure. There's many of these that have been growing around the country, but they are all facing the same problems and that I'm going to talk about in a minute. This next layer here tells you the types of things that have to be available to build a cyber infrastructure. We have high performance computing services. We have observation measurements. We have data knowledge and management services, interfaces, visualization services, and collaboration, which is a really important thing. How do we collaborate at distance is a really big topic. And, and so some of these are, are things that you see already today when you look at web conferencing. Some of them are very fairly standard, but we're trying to raise our ability to be able to collaborate at a distance and against time. This next layer is also very important to build cyber infrastructure. We have to have networking, we have to have operating systems and middleware. The base technology, of course, is computation. Storage, which is a big thing, because we have lots of repositories, lots of data that have to be shared. And then there has to be communication. So what is the promise of cyber infrastructure? Cyber infrastructure will enable people, tools, and information to be linked in ways 
that reduces barriers of location, time, institution, and discipline. So NSF is really investing a lot of money in this because what they see is that all institutions um, will be able to, be, to do the type of research at the level that they need to do because it's no longer confined to just an institution that has all the resources. So that is the promise of cyber infrastructure. So the Center of Excellence was funded in August of this year. Uh, I'm directing the center, Rodrigo Romero is the assistant director. The investigators in our department are Vladek Krinovich and, and Paolo Pinedo da Silva, Aaron Velasco from Earth Science, Craig Tweedy from Environmental Science, Leticia Velasquez and Miguel are guys from Computational Math. So it's truly an interdisciplinary team of researchers. Our motivation comes from what I was talking to you earlier about the challenges. We want to be able to support the scientists as they transition from their solitary way of doing research to one in which they're using a network or a grid. We want to work with them to develop the resources and tools that are needed in order to be able to do cyber infrastructure. So this includes you know, building ontologies, building workflows, building interfaces that allow them to retrieve data and so forth so that it can be shared. That's why we call it CyberShare. CyberShare stands for sharing resources to advance research and education. So we need to develop the tools and they need to be scientist-centered. It cannot be technologists developing tools and saying, here, use them, but the scientists informing us how, what types of tools they want and what are the features that need to be present. And that's a huge challenge. I just got back from a large workshop at the National Science Foundation on building virtual communities, and that was the theme that played over and over and over again. Uh, even with the large successful cyber infrastructure efforts, it's the scientists want tools that they can use and that they feel comfortable. Now when you start pulling information off of the web or off of the internet or, or from a grid, this third bullet becomes a really important part of it. How do I know that I can trust that information? I don't know where it's coming from. If I'm going to use an algorithm that someone uh, posted or, or put on a, on a portal, how do I know that that's going to do what I want it to do? How has it been tested? Where did the data come from? How was the data filtered? What model of instrument was used? How accurate is it? All of these questions are ones that the scientists um, tell us and, that, and why they're reluctant to use cyber infrastructure. So the overarching goal of this center is to enhance research capabilities in science, engineering, and technology. And I apologize to Brian Giza from Education because he's another investigator on our project. So we're working with the Education Department here at UTEP to develop components that can be used in, in K-12 so that we can start educating the new generation of scientists that are coming up. We want to promote the development of new knowledge and discovery, and as I said, train and educate the next generation of computer and inter interdisciplinary scientists. Uh, and then, this last bullet is we want to start contributing resources that we can put onto the web and allow discovery of those resources. So we have been working with geoscientists for a number of years here at UTEP, and so what we're trying to do is now uh, be able to systematically put all of these tools that we have created so that they're discovered by other scientists. Some of those appear on GEON, but with CyberShare, we want to start collecting data, collecting tools. And so I encourage anyone that's aware of anything uh, to contribute to CyberShare. We're starting to build our infrastructure right now. So as I said, or I, I didn't really, I alluded to this, but there's, there, all of these centers have a thrust of different uh, projects. So there are three projects that are under our center. One in computer science that's called the Quest to Understand and Trust Scientific Results, led by Dr. De Silva and Dr. Kronovich. In the geo, earth science world, it's affected development of 3D models of the earth structure and in environmental science, it's advancing the utility of cyber infrastructure and environmental science. 
The thread that runs through all of these is this whole notion of trust, uncertainty, because when you're taking measurements from sensors um, and, and other instruments, there's sometimes a, some uncertainty in the results. Uh, there's there's um, errors that can be introduced. So all of this notion of errors, uncertainty, are also is a thread that runs through this whole project. So the Earth Science Project is looking at the processes, you know, that that of, of the Earth structure, and it wants it, it has three main goals. It wants to advance data fusion of distinct information sources that tell us something about the physical properties of the Earth. They want to look at the optimization techniques for integrating data that has different levels of accuracy and different levels of sensitivity. And it wants to look at the error sensitivity resolution of data models. So here's a, a picture of that particular, uh, the problems that they're facing. So they want to be able to understand the Earth's structure. You know, what are the physical properties of Earth? But all the data is coming from a lot of different resources. Some are coming from information that has been measured and collected. Others are just assumed parameters. They make educated guesses and then look at how it impacts the model. And, and they make estimates. So they're coming up with these mapping algorithms that are going to then give us a model of the Earth. And so this is a really big problem in geoscience. Uh, Earth Scope is a big project uh, funded by NSF that is uh, looking at this. So this is something that it will always be evolving because, you know, when you start looking into the Earth's structure, you know, you have to guess. I mean, they, they shoot off explosions and take measurements and all that to look at velocity models. But uh, it's, it's a lot of it is guesswork. So can we come up with a good model is uh, one of the, is the challenge that they're facing. In environmental science, they're looking more at the, the data and the set that they have a lot of sensors. We're looking at global change in this particular project. So a lot of work is being done in the Arctic and Antarctic. So they're looking at quality assurance and optimization tools for uh, static field-based instrumentation, uh, tools that can integrate large data streams uh, to link, uh, spatially extrapolate, and animate uh, real-time and archive data in some of the portals that are existing already in environmental science and to optimize the spatial temporal data collection and the sensor arrays in environmental observatories. So this is a, the sexy project because they do a lot of really neat things. Uh, they are, uh, this is a picture up in Alaska, uh, the mechanical uh, department, engineering department here built this uh, tram, a robotic tram. So there's a robot. Uh, this is going out in a U-shape and it's collecting um, data at, at every so many meters and streaming that in. So this project is actually being taken up by our software engineering class this semester. Uh, they're processing real and near time, uh, near real time data. They're looking at optical reflectance, collecting data from multiple sensors. So there's a lot of weather station data. There's a little hook up here. Uh, it takes pictures of the vegetation. Uh, they also look at temperature, humidity. They look at the leaves uh, and vegetation. And so there's huge amounts of data that are coming in. And it's all being processed manually. So what we're doing is we're developing tools for them uh, that are looking at you know, integrating these data sets, trying to do some filtering for them, trying to help them do their analysis where they're not doing it by hand. And so there's also a need for wireless communications because this is on a tram going into a data logger that you see there and then that's uploaded into a database. And so what we're trying to do is, is make this available in real time for scientists around the world uh, to be able to use. This is their other nice project. They're using an unmanned aerial vehicle. One of our computer science students is working on this project. Uh, they're taking a lot of what they learned from the tram system. It's a remote control radio a satellite with a large load capacity, easy to fly. Industry is very interested in the results that are coming out of this piece of work. It's, it's brand new. Uh, and then there's some more that I'm not going to show you because of time. But these are the projects in environmental science. In computer science, our major goal is to gain users confident of workflow execution results by enhancing 
the results with prominence. Uh, information, trust recommendations, and levels of uncertainty. So some of the research questions that we're looking at is how can prominence support the computation of uncertainty levels and trust recommendations for workflow results in the Earth and Environmental Science Observing Networks? And how can it facilitate the user's understanding of the acceptance of those results? Remember, a big problem is that we can provide the scientists with information, but unless they know that this is a source I trust, they will not use it. And so all of our efforts will be for nothing. So we have a lot of opportunities uh, with the CyberShare Center. We have what we call CyberShare Research Scholars. We're supporting undergraduate and PhD students. Our whole goal is to move uh, the number of students, especially those from underrepresented groups, into uh, higher level degrees, PhDs. And we also have research experiences for undergraduates. So what we're hoping is that if you're interested in a project like this, uh, come see us because uh, we need to get scientists that become interested in the, in the geoscience project or in the environmental science project and work alongside with these uh, different groups of people uh, so that we can create better tools. So it's not about being alone and doing your research, but working with others to get the work done. We are going to be giving workshops um, in the summer. We did one last summer. We will include students in these workshops uh, to learn some of the cyber infrastructure tools that we are developing or are being developed and that are out there right now. And we have a strong K-12 outreach. So if you're interested in this, our program co coordinator is Mary Contreras. Her office is downstairs in the basement in Computer Science 120. And I, we have a sign-up sheet here, so at the end of this uh, talk today, the symposium, colloquium, you can sign up, and if you're interested, and we'll be happy to contact you and, and tell you more and, and see if we can involve you in the project. So are there any questions? If I can add, if you're scared to death, wear a mask, Come into my office and talk to me, talk to the about the office. We can talk, explain, and then you are happy to take off the mask or sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and would this effort give any credence to uh, hooking our HPC systems up to their, there's a Texas grid. Yes, right. I mean, so I mean there is a that. small grid in Texas. Yes. Absolutely. What we would like to do. I think this, this is, when we start talking about sharing resources, we want to share computing power. And so we want to, one of the things that we're going to do is every Friday, once we get our space going, which will be in geology at the old MIE office, we will be inviting people that can use computing power or and, and try to inform them of what resources are available. So we should really talk about that and see how we can put pointers and start connecting people. And also that would help people that would give them like one step up. Yes. And then after that they could go to the terror grid where they'd get really large. Right, exactly. So we could actually define a path. To get to the yeah. to get to where they're doing all the super super computing. Yeah. Right. And, and then the other question idea. is on the terror grid there's uh -huh. science gateways. That's right. There's a lot of work right. by Nancy. Right. Is this any way connected yeah. to the Alliance Gateway? Actually, they're, they're on our board of advisors. Mm -hmm. So, Tara, we have uh, Lanthrop is on our board of yes. advisors. So, uh, so, we are Scott Lanthrop. So, we have, we're connecting with a, a, a wide variety of people uh, across, across the nation because that's the whole, the whole idea. So, how can we um, leverage off of the some of the components, that educational components, for instance, that are being done at San Diego Supercomputer Center, uh, TerraGrid. Uh, the other one is, um, I forgot, the big education uh, cyber infrastructure. But also, all, all the other resources. The, the education, I, I want to say, I don't know. Digital library. The digital library is another one. At, but yes. Same question as last week. I'm a senior uh, undergrad. And, uh, uh, you are senior. Very, very interesting. Uh, very uh, senior undergrad. Two years ago, I barely knew how to program, so I'm not sure I can contribute yeah. anything to this. 
Right, and, and that's one of the things that we really take pride in with the projects that we do is that um, we use a model for involving undergraduate research called Affinity Research Model. And that model is really works on developing, deliberately developing student skills. And so every student comes with some assets. Uh, and it may not be at the level of programming, but it may be that you can go do some research, you can do some writing, you can do other things that can support the center. So we will be taking you, even as a freshman, and then working with you so that uh, eventually you become a contributing mem member of the group. Uh, we can actually, we did have this experience because last year with uh, Leo Soliandia's help, we had two freshman students who helped in designing websites. I mean, they knew a little bit that's about right. web pages. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a good way to start. You get involved a little bit. And if you're a senior undergraduate student, let me put it this way, we professors know better, but uh, you have a big advantage. By the time a student becomes a PhD student, that student sometimes forgets how to program. So <laughs> senior undergraduate students are the best. If you want somebody to actually program, maybe PhD students, especially if they're on the theoretical side, they need to refresh their memories, but you still remember how to do that, especially if you're in software engineering class or something else. So. And right now we're using a wiki for our website. I should have put the website up. I apologize. But um, the wiki you know, allows us to add information. And, and we really need students that are good writers that can help us put information up as, as we do our research. An hour and a half so there's, there's a place for everybody. If you're interested, please let us know. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you.